Hey y'all, it's Betsy with Happily Ever After, etc. And welcome back to another gardening project. So today we will be planting two new Proven Winners annuals. As always, this is not sponsored. I just really like their flowers. <laughs> I picked these up today on a plant shopping expedition um, to try to find a few things that I did not find. Instead, I found these. And I'm happy with that. So... I have a few few spare spots like right up front here and around my oak tree that still need a few annuals. Now I'm not necessarily looking for big things. I'm looking for shorter plants for these spaces. I had pulled out some pansies in both of these spots. So to replace the pansies, which are our cold weather annuals, or what I planted for cold weather annuals, I'm looking for hot weather annuals. So these are things that have to be able to take full sun up here at the front of the border. So for this spot, I picked this beautiful verbena. It is a superbena in the pink shades. So this guy gets six to 12 inches tall and about 14 um, inches wide minimum. It depends. This is a superbena, but it is not one of their more robust verbenas. Um, so I'm not 100% sure how this one is going to perform. Typically, their verbenas do, you know, flower continuously. They don't need deadheaded. They don't need cut back and are just a really good, hardworking, full sun annual for us down here. So I'm going to put two up front here where I was hoping some vinca would have receded from last year. But when I pulled those pansies out, I'm only seeing two or three baby vincas. Um, might be jumping the gun. Maybe they're still coming. But by this time of the year, usually there's tons of little baby vincas there if they're coming. And I know I didn't plant any last year. I didn't plant vinca there. Um, so I just think two of these. I bought three because I wasn't sure if I needed two there or three. But I think two will be perfect right next to the pincushion flowers and in front of the cone flowers. And it is a very similar color, a little brighter than the Super Tunia Vista Bubblegum. So I think it'll help draw that pink over. I put in a lot of purples and blues this year and I want more pink, pink's my thing. But on the other hand, up around the tree, the oak tree, I have a lot more pinks and I needed something that was not pink. <laughs> and so I decided to try this Lobelia. So this is a Laguna Sky Blue Lobelia. Last year I put in a Lobelia in front of my little bird bath that was not proven winners. It was a generic Lobelia and it did okay until the heat of the summer. But that is a full sun spot. And so I am going to try this guy in a part shade spot. He'll get a little bit of morning sun and then shade for almost the entire afternoon. And I have heard that if you can put this guy in a part shade spot, they can be really happy and flower for us in this, our zone. I'm in an 8B the entire season. So I have three of these uh, and three of the verbena. We're going to go ahead and tuck one of these up by almost by the lobelia in another spot that is free. And we're just going to kind of see how they do. The other option was I could have grabbed another bubble gum right here but bubblegum gets so big in our area I'm expecting it to really fill in that entire three to four foot space over here where the blue pansies are so I think up front the bubblegum would get way too big so let's go ahead and plant these and I will give you updates throughout the season these are both new to me annuals so I'm very excited to see how they do in my garden the Lobelia, I didn't even tell you, it is a little taller. So it is six to 12 inches tall, full to part sun. So it does need, like I said, in our zone where it gets really hot, it needs a little bit of shade. Um, and it can be spaced out 12 to 18 inches apart. So let's get planted because I want to get these planted, fertilized and watered in before the sun goes down. All right, so these should be pretty easy to plant. You can see one of the Vinca babies here. There's just 
There's only a couple this year. So as much as I like free plants, three vinca will not fill up this whole space. So let's go ahead and plant these guys. They can start growing in. This guy is really low in his can. <laughs> Look at that. It's like a whole like two inches shorter than I would have thought he'd be. Still has plenty of roots, so I'm not concerned. But you know. down here and I'm not sure what it's for. You need the crepe myrtle tree because it's a decent sized root for this area. I'm not going to break it. I'm just going to dig around it. fertilizer this year. Is that just me? A little bit too much out. Mix that fertilizer in. There we go. much closer to the pincushion plants than I thought it was going to be. But he should really spread out and fill in this whole area, so should be fine. Those pretty blooms. Hope they do well here. There we go. water them in, but it should be good. All right, we started over here and we've got everything planted all the way to here. So in between this Laura Pedlum and my knockout rows here, I planted one of our pink shades, verbena, superbean, I guess I should say. You can see it has lots more buds and I planted them right by a water emitter. So should be nice and happy here. We will see how he does. I've got some cosmos planted all back in here. So once these babies grow up, that should be a very pretty mix. And hopefully this guy will just kind of 
take over this whole space underneath those two plants. Then we have our blue sky lobelia. So I really hope these do well here. They should be able to fill in this whole little space in between the knockout rows and the daisies. They are a beautiful pop of blue. And the tree here gives them really good shade in the afternoon. So hopefully they will not get too hot. If these guys peter out and don't make it all summer, we may not try them again. But I do really like the Lobelia. And I think these are going to be a better option than the generic ones we tried last year. Last but not least, let's head down the path. I did get a replacement hydrangea on this trip as well. You can see my one right here sticks. Like it just did not come back. Whereas all my other hydrangeas, this one that I planted at the same time is, is leafing out. My bigger ones down here and across the way are both uh, not only leafing out, but already producing buds. So hopefully that new hydrangea will do well. Here is an example of a verbena. This is the homestead verbena that is a perennial. It comes back. And so this is kind of what it does is it's a ground cover. As the season comes on, it will keep just filling out more and more. But this is like, this is really good for early in the season. So last but not least, our other two Pink Shades Verbena, Supervena. Dun, da, da, da. I think these will be a really pretty color. You can see the newer colors are a brighter pink and they fade to a lighter pink as they age. Hopefully they will kinda, again, just fill in this whole area under these plants. We've got our three cone flowers. We've got our Barbara Mitchell Daylily, which is finally putting out buds for its first time ever in my garden. Pincushion flowers and the April Night Salvia that I just planted and the blooms were just tired from being at the store. So I went ahead and cut them back when I planted them. And then the last of the pansies, and it's still looking a little decent. The closer we get into a uh, summer, the more ragged they look and the more I pull out. But this bubble gum will take over this whole area eventually. And so every week I just kind of pull another ring of pansies around it so that it has more space. And eventually they will, they'll all be gone. But right now there's no reason to pull the whole bunch. There'll just be dirt there, so. I hope you liked this video. I am very excited to try these two plants. The Lobelia, the Blue Sky, is supposed to have a much higher heat tolerance than normal Lobelias and putting it in a spot with afternoon shade. I think you will be very happy there and I think maybe we will have a successful Lobelia planting. And I know I love Verbena, but this is the first time I have tried anything but the Homestead Purple, so I'm excited to try an annual verbena, I hear that they will bloom their little heads off. So let's give it a shot. Um, of course, proven winners are a little pricier than normal annuals, but I found these for $6 each, which that was great. Most of the proven winners annuals I find are $10 each. So that was four bucks of savings. And they just, they perform really well in our heat usually. So that's worth it, you know? If, for, if, if extra, a little bit extra dollars means I get blooms all summer, instead of petering out in July, I will take it. So I am going to go ahead and pull out a few more pansies and pop in a few more seeds, but first I'm going to water these in. So I will see y'all later. If you want to check out, I guess when I planted that homestead verbena last summer, I planted that last summer as one of the first um, perennials of the season. So if you want to check that out, I will link it right here. Bye.